Hello and welcome to this video on an introduction to Veritas Data Insight. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So let's look at this product, Data Insight. What does it do? Well, fundamentally it does two different things. First of all, it scans shares for metadata and permissions. This is something that's done periodically, like once a day for an incremental scan or even once a month for a full scan. The other thing it does, it acts like an ear. It listens for access events from configured devices. This is probably the most interesting bit because this is what gives us that breadth of information about how users are accessing data and what they're actually doing. So any read or write or create or delete event will be captured by Data Insight. So let's look at the architectural components of the product. So first of all, we always have one management server this provides the web interface for users to access the product. It also queries the indexes for reports uh, and the workspace. And also importantly, it connects to your directory services, for instance, Active Directory. The indexer role stores the scan and event data. It acts as a database, but it doesn't use any commercial database like SQL or Oracle. It uses a proprietary database that was written by Veritas. It's like a big data type product. The indexer, if it's a separate machine from the management server, should be located next to the management server, i.e. not over a wide area network. The collector is the role that listens for access events and scans file systems and passes data to the indexer. And the collector should be close to the filers that it's actually monitoring. We can have all three of these roles on the same box, which is basically an all-in-one server, or we can separate them out into a two-tier model or a three-tier model. A two-tier model is a management server and one or more collectors sitting locally listening for access events from the local filers. A three-tier architecture is obviously a management server, separate indexers and separate collectors. And whether you need the two or three tier architecture depends obviously on the size of the organization and the geographical spread of the organization as well. So this is an overall three tier architecture. We've got the collectors sitting close to the file servers, listening for access events and scanning the file servers periodically. They're passing that information back using a kind of store and forward system to the indexers. The indexers will ingest that information and index it. Then the management server can query those indexers for presenting information from the workspace and very importantly for creating reports. The management server also periodically connects to Active Directory to synchronize information about users and groups. There are a couple of main use cases for Veritas Data Insight. The first one is information security risk, which is about locating at-risk data and investigating data leaks. There are a number of different things we can do within the products. I'm going to show you those in a minute in the demonstration, but let's have a look at them in overview. First of all, we can identify open shares. An open share is, is defined by the administrator as, for instance, a certain number of users within the ACL or can, the ACL containing particular groups like everyone we also display folders that contain sensitive files. This requires integration with semantic data loss prevention, but it's very powerful because it tells you which folders are, are particularly sensitive. It also shows files and folders that have high activity. Now combining those three together, whether it's a share is open, whether it contains sensitive files, and whether it has high activity, the product will give you an overall risk factor. The risk factor runs from 0 to 100, highest factor being obviously 100. And that means that we have an open share that's got lots of sensitive files and there's lots of activity within that uh, share. This is a great way of very quickly identifying when you have issues and got particular folders and shares that you need to deal with and maybe change the permissions. So let's have a look at the product now. I'm going to give you a demonstration of how it works. Concentrate on the security use case. In this demonstration, I'm going to introduce you to the Data Insight Management Console, and then I'm going to concentrate on the security use case. So as you can see, I'm already logged on to the Data Insight Management Console, 
and I'm on the settings tab. If you look across the top here, I've got these four different tabs and all the settings for Data Insight are on this tab called settings. And here we're just looking at the health and monitoring of the system. And as you can see, everything is green. So I'm going to start here by clicking Data Insight Servers. And you can see that I've got a management server. So open that up. So you can see it's a management server. Actually, it's all three. It's a management server, it's an index and a collector. I only have one Data Insight server within my environment. If I go onto the Advanced Settings tab, you can see how I can control what this server is actually doing. So I can control scanning, for instance. If I open that up, you can see that scanning by default happens, a full scan happens at 1900 on the last Friday of each month. Also, you can see that scanning is paused every weekday between 7 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock in the evening. Of course, there's good reason for doing that to protect uh, the file server. The incremental scans happen once a day at, uh, at 1900. Also on here, I have got um, indexer settings. So indexing happens every four hours by default. That's the default schedule. So you'll never see things happening immediately in interface. It will take up to maybe four to six hours before you'll see anything. Then we have this strange thing called audit events pre-processing. I usually describe this as the get the rid of the rubbish process. This runs on the collector nodes. And what if you think about, for instance, Microsoft um, Office documents, they create those weird temp tilde files and Data Insight will collect the access events for those. So we want to have a process that's going to get rid of what I call that rubbish. And that's what this is. So it runs on your collector, it runs by default every two hours, and it cleans up all the access events and presents you with just the data that you want to be indexed, not um, duplicate events and so on. You can obviously control how, when that happens. So let's now go on to the Filers tab. And I've got one file server in my environment. So if I open that up, you can see the settings here. Actually, what I'm going to do is just to add a new filer. You can see the supported uh, file servers, so NetApp, both normal and cluster mode, EMC Solera, EMC Isilon, Windows File Server, which is a bit different because it installs an agent on your Windows file servers, Veritas File Server, uh, Hitachi NAS. You can add generic devices. The other thing you can do now with uh, version 5 is you can add uh, cloud sources. Just for this version, only Box, although they are going to add other ones in subsequent releases. So if we add a Windows file server, obviously we need to put in the name of the file server, specify the node that is going to collect the information and index it. And I need to have credentials. So you, you create what are called save credentials in Data Insight that contain the username and password. So I need to specify those. The file administrator credentials will be used to install the agent on the file server. So that's where it says let Data Insight install agents automatically. So in that case, it's going to do a push install of the agent. It's going to automatically discover shares. This means it's going to do access event monitoring. This is, means it's going to do scanning. Uh, and I normally in a lab environment would scan newly added shares immediately so it doesn't wait to the next scheduled scan to do it. So if we go back into our file server again and go on to the monitored shares tab, you can see we've got a number of different shares on here and you can see when the last full scan was and the last incremental scan and when the audit index was last updated. The reason why this is quite a long time ago is that I've just switched on this system and it hasn't had a chance yet to process uh, and index any new changes to the system. You now go on to directory services and I've added my example.com active directory domain already and you can see it synchronized 62 users and 69 groups. 
I can also specify the attributes that I'm going to synchronize. So I'm synchronizing the email attribute, but I'm also synchronizing the department and the citizenship attribute, which is being actually pulled from what we call the country name from Active Directory. Now, of course, that depends on whether or not you have got information within AD. But if you have, it can be very powerful when we're looking at the interface uh, in the workspace. So let's actually go to the workspace now. So that's up here. And the default view is what we call this dashboard, which shows us five different tabs. So the data sources are my file servers, uh, my shares, pretty obvious what a share is, the users that have been synchronized, and then over here I've got watch list and alerts. I can open up the shares pane by clicking more here. And you can see all my different shares. And this is the security view. You can see that up in the top right hand corner. And it shows me the whether it's an open share. So HR, for instance, is an open share. It's a collaborative share, so the users are accessing various different files within that share. It contains sensitive files. Um, it's got active users, and it's calculated a risk factor of 100. 100 is the highest risk factor that you can have within Data Insight. So from point administrative point of view, it'd be something that I'd want to investigate more. So if I click on HR, you can see in the summary pane, I've got more information here uh, about the number of files and so on. I can change the view up here. So if I go to the activity view and I get uh, columns specifically related to activity, so the active size, the number of active files and so on within that share. So if I can leave uh, HR selected, I can do this expand profile. And when I do that, I get a number of different tabs. So on the overview tab, I can see the metadata, for instance, the last access and last modified date. On the user activity tab, I get something really useful. I get what we call the inferred data owner. So what Data Insight is doing is calculating based on the read and write count, who is the user that's inferred as being the owner, i.e. the person who's most reading and writing files within this particular share, and it's calculated as being Graham Smith. This is a really useful thing if you want to know the go-to person to ask any questions about this share, for instance, if you're going to change the permissions. The folder activity tab shows me things like the inactive uh, subfolders. So in the last seven days, there's been no activity at all within these uh, particular folders. Uh, I can see it by time as well. Permissions um, shows me the access control list of these effective rights. I can see just the NTFS permissions or the share level permissions. I can also see the audit logs for a particular user here as well. The other really important tool when using the product is the reports. And there are lots and lots of different uh, canned reports in the system and you can create your own customized reports as well. A lot of them are to do with either security or storage and data management. So we're going to concentrate on the security reports here and let's do the access summary for paths and create the report. So I'm going to create uh, an HTML report. You can keep a number of uh, copies of the report. So I'm going to say I'm going to keep 20 copies of this report. On the configuration tab, I'm going to say that I want to act activity time period as being one month. Then I'm going to do, actually I'm going to include some custom attributes so you can see the power of that. So I could say I want to show the department attribute, for instance. For data selection, I'm going to choose server one. So you can see that's selected over here. And for users, I'm going to use some groups.
So I'm going to choose HR. And IT. So I can exclude particular users, I can notify people, I can do remediation, but I'm just going to run the report now. It just takes a short while to process. Okay, it's completed, so you can see an icon for the report, so I click that and it open up in a new tab. So I can see a summary here for the activity for each of the different users accessing files within this particular server and I can get some more detail down here so I can see the total number of accesses so NCAPER for instance total number of accesses 756 and number of reads and writes don't worry too much about the fact that the number of reads and writes is identical I've got a script that's running in the background that's reading and writing these files. So you've got um, some strange values, but you know, normally they'd be different numbers. So that brings to the end of this demonstration of how to use Data Insight, particularly for the security use case.